Right folks, so we've come back to Paul Treath because we're going to go and have another look at these ammunition bunkers or better camera and a bit better lighting system so hopefully we should be able to go and have a look in a bit more detail and hopefully some better quality video. These are from the former RAF Portreath, the wartime RAF Portreath, and I'm going to go straight in and have a look. And see what we've got straight away. Well, lots of graffiti and litter. Quite interesting. Yeah, mind your head. I like that. That's pretty good. So obviously strength and concrete. And this is where small arms ammunition would have been fit, uh, stored, basically. Things like machine gun bullets and flares, uh, rockets, that sort of thing. And obviously a remote location away from everything because it obviously would have been full of uh, explosives explosive ordnance so the station was bombed quite a lot by the Germans during the World War two and you know wouldn't really want to be next to this lot if it got took out so they're all similar so we'll just move around a bit and uh, have a quick look at each one uh, We'll go outside and take a look at the interior, well the exterior, sorry, from the back, which is pretty cool. I've got my excellent torch here today as well. This is the first time I've properly used it for an explore, which is great. So, pretty good. Moving out. So, coming outside again and when we get round the back you see there pretty much mirror image of the front really but walk around a bit Interestingly enough, just over the hedge, there is some more. Interesting. See there we've got some pretty much the same you can see these air ministry buildings all pretty much made into the same sort of template and would have been some pretty large steel doors here at some point I would have thought 
and give you an idea how dark it is without the camera yeah it's pretty dark there we go so just try and steady everything up a bit but yeah not a lot to see really but surprisingly the concrete is in quite good condition actually and we've got like a an original feature still left there it's like for a cable or something coming in but uh, pretty good so we'll move on to the next one got some plenty of rubbish junk here oh actually when I came back came here before obviously it was harder to get into because of all the grass and everything you can see there we've moved on to the next one um, pretty similar really unremarkable but the funny thing is with the site the land that we're on was actually once part of the wartime RAF Portree and when RAF Portree was uh, reused or put back into operation as it is now in 1979 I believe then the land was the borders were all adjusted and obviously this land then fell outside of the Ministry of Defence land obviously because it was probably a burden no longer required oh somebody's left some tent poles there look it's rather interesting but, uh, yeah we've got another cable point there and some venting but very dry in here actually it's quite good so we'll move on so much graffiti in these which is unusual probably not as easy to get into but yeah this one's a bit wet got a rather interesting surface on the floor as well which is pretty unremarkable but good that it's all survived this long now I think over there on the back wall is something we didn't have in the last one we've got a cable duct perhaps for a light fitting obviously World War II light fitting which is pretty good and looking around again it's pretty good but there we go so we'll have a quick look at the last one on this block not even going to turn the torch off actually. Well, obviously, this one has had some concrete removed from it. We can just see that there. Concrete removed from it, and obviously, some damage to the concrete there. modification by maybe the farmer or somebody else obviously but uh, yeah. rather interesting graffiti tag there but so what
that is the uh, site of the Cold War era air control center I believe it is basically to coordinate any defenses from uh, a nuclear attack but also is now used so we're just having a look at them from here across and I believe we're going to go and have a look at this one which will find a better way inside I think Right, so this one's quite interesting. Some uh, graffiti in here. Obviously, I think the graffiti is quite old because it's all these rooms are dry and basically shielding the graffiti. I don't know what looks like something odd's going on here with. Some sort of ramp or curbs, curbs, whatever that is. But uh, yeah, looks like some concrete from somewhere. Not sure where that's from. Could be modern or might even be a fence post. But this is definitely one of the cleanest ones, apart from the graffiti. And we've got big concrete lintel going right the way across but uh, yeah we'll go over here in a minute and look at the view from the entrance and sorry some rude rather rude and offensive graffiti but obviously it is what it is so, we'll have a look at the last one. I think this was the first one we came in, but worth another look as well. Graffiti, more graffiti, but quite interesting. But that's about it. So, now I'm pretty certain that just ahead there, I'll zoom in a bit, you can see there's another series of these bunkers or rooms, just the same. in there they're pretty much all the same really but uh, we'll head back to the bike but see you in a moment right so just thought we'd have a look at this feature it's been here for a long time on uh, RAF Portreath the modern RAF Portreath you see what I said it was uh, I think it was some uh, Defence Coordination Centre, obviously Cold War era. And, uh, now I don't normally do this, folks, but I've actually hidden my helmet in the hedge, <laughs> so saves carrying it. But we're here at this site today, anyway, and it's utterly deserted. There's nobody here. At all. But, uh, I hope you've enjoyed a bit of a more in-depth look at these things anyway and uh, until the next time take care and see you soon folks